Nvidia aren't the only brand who'll try to bamboozle you with deceptive model numbers. Not only is the 10GB AMD Radeon RX 6750GRE a completely different GPU to the 12GB RX 6750GRE, with fewer shaders and TMUs, fewer compute units and less infinity cache, it's also just a refresh of an old model. Both 6750s were China exclusive relaunches of the RX 6700 and 6700 XT from 2021, which exists because I guess AMD realized nobody wanted the RX 7600. If you ain't up on things, the GRE stands for Golden Rabbit Edition. These cards would eventually become globally available, but they were originally intended exclusively for sale in China, released as they were in the Year of the Rabbits. Looking around online, both versions of the GRE seem to have mostly dried up, with only a handful of listings still available on AliExpress. Still, there's a chance you might come across one in the wild, so it could be worth knowing if this or its predecessor are worth picking up. Those of you who know the channel can probably guess why I bought another RX 6700 variant. The 36CU RDNA 2 GPU is basically the same as the one found in the base model Sony PS5. And yes, I'm working on another PS5 equivalent build video for next year. For now though, I wanted to ignore the console heritage and look at the 10GB 6750GRE as a product you might want to buy for 1440p gaming. After all, the next nearest card in price is the RX 6600 series, and they've proven to be great for playing most games at 1080p, so you'd hope that the more expensive GRE would be able to take you to the next level. As such, I'll be testing using a selection of modern games, but I'll be skipping ray tracing where possible. To be blunt, RDNA 2 can't RT worth a damn, and if this specific GPU were any good at it, then there wouldn't be a reason to buy a PS5 Pro. Wait. Stalker 2 is still perhaps in need of a couple more patches, so it's possible this part of the video may age like milk, but right now it's pretty rough on this GPU. The game is built on Unreal 5 and uses Lumen for ray traced global illumination. This makes a lot of sense from a development perspective as it cuts down on rendering time, but it can mean that at lower settings and lower frame rates, it looks a bit crunchy. It also means that even a fairly powerful GPU like this one doesn't have much choice. At 1440 medium, we're barely scraping over 31 FPS in the town, while adding quality FSR brings that up to a more acceptable 43. FSR performance is probably a step too far in terms of image quality, as things just devolve into a smeary mess, and the 51 FPS average it achieves hardly seems worth it. It's not time to start easing up just yet. Black Myth Wukong is not a lightweight title by any stretch. It also relies on Lumen software ray tracing, and while powerful RT hardware isn't mandatory for playing the game, it helps. Without FSR upscaling or frame gen, I initially tested at high, but only saw a playable frame rate at 1080p. I had to drop 1440p to medium just to get a constant 30 plus. Star Wars Outlaws is yet another RT-centric title, with a ray-traced global illumination system built right into the game, so it's punishing on this GPU even without enabling the RTX DI direct illumination feature. This time, it's not UE5's fault, as this was developed on Ubisoft's own engine, but it still has the same look and feel as Lumen, and at 1440 medium, we're barely remaining over 30 FPS. RTX DI isn't specific to Nvidia hardware, so it could work on the GRE in theory, but in reality, I don't think we want to go there. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is a late addition to the test lineup, and while not as demanding as the last three games, I can confirm it needs a lot of VRAM. 
Thankfully, the GRE's 10 gigabytes means it can comfortably run the game at low or medium settings. However, a warning appears at the high preset and there's no reactive VRAM meter to indicate how bad it is. As I didn't have time to work out optimised settings, I ran through the jungle section at the start of the game at low, medium and high presets. At 1440p, only low holds onto a 60 average, with high falling to just over 40 FPS. 1080p medium stays at around the 60 mark, with high still functioning but falling below 60, and it's entirely possible that it won't hold up so well throughout the rest of the game. 1440 Meanwhile, Ghost of Tsushima comes to us from the PS4 generation, so there's a little more flexibility here. The 10 gigabytes RX 6750 GRE, henceforth referred to simply as the GRE, can break past a 60 FPS average at 1440 high without any upscaling, and 1% lows only fall a few frames below the line. The story's mostly the same in Horizon Forbidden West, though with the caveat that you have to drop to medium. Any higher than that will fall short of the 60 mark, unless you add some upscaling, which I prefer not to do in benchmarking unless absolutely necessary. Meanwhile, you can get very close results at 1080p high if you want that extra bit of detail on your lower resolution monitor. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart can be surprisingly heavy on hardware once RT is enabled, particularly on Radeon GPUs and GeForces with less than 12 gigs of VRAM. With that in mind, I didn't even bother with ray tracing on this test, though I will be trying it out in my upcoming PS5 equivalent build. At 1440 high, the average is pretty much bang on 60 FPS, though lows are in the mid-30s, most likely due to a lack of VRAM. My video about the RX 6700 took place not long after The Last of Us Part 1 released on PC, back when it was one of the catalysts of the VRAM panic of 2023. Back then, I couldn't run the game at 1440p above medium without getting a warning, and 1080p was limited to high. Since then, the game's been patched, and now the VRAM scale is far more forgiving. However, I still feel like 10 gigabytes isn't quite enough. The average of 54 FPS at 1440 high is on par with the average I got at medium a year ago, but the 1% lows are a fair bit lower. There's no RT to turn off this time, so I'm afraid the solution is to drop back to medium or to enable quality FSR. Cyberpunk would also probably benefit from some FSR, however, I'm not a huge fan of its implementation here. Still, if you're content to play at around 40 FPS, it's not the worst experience I've ever had. At 1080p, it's over 60 FPS, and that's about what you'd expect from 1440p with quality FSR, though with extra ghosting. Yikes, I think I see why the PS5 Pro was needed for Alan Wake 2. The GRE is not up to the task at 1440p, even dropped to medium settings, barely scraping 30 FPS on average and dropping into the mid-20s. At 1080p it climbs into the mid-40s, which I found far more enjoyable. This is without ray tracing, naturally. This generation of Radeon GPU doesn't handle path tracing at all well, so only RT low would even be conceivable, and even then only with copious amounts of FSR. Finally, Starfield's still not a great performer on Radeon GPUs. At 1440 high, it's only managing 36 FPS around New Atlantis, though it does at least stay above 30 most of the time. 
Even dropping to 1080p doesn't help all that much, with the average only climbing to 46. Alas, 60 FPS is only going to happen with the low preset or more FSR than I'm comfortable recommending. I have to admit, I was probably being a bit optimistic. The 10GB RX 6750 GRE is a perfectly capable card, and for the right price, it could be a steal for 1080p high or very high gaming, or 1440p in esports or games from 2022 or earlier. However, it's only borderline for the latest games. If you have one already, it still works, and you can probably hold on to it until something better comes along in your price range, but if you're in the market for a decent entry-level 1440p GPU, I'd recommend you either pay the extra for the 12GB model, or save up for a 6800. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.